G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today is one of those days when anything that could go wrong did go wrong. I've come out here early o'clock. I haven't made a single damn video because everything has turned to custard. So I thought I'd make this video and complain about it. Everyone loves complaining. Um, but a bit of a roundup what's going on. A lot of people asking a lot of questions recently. So I'm going to give you some answers if I can. Now, first of all, ADS-B alarm. What's happening with that? Well, I'm actually working on a smartphone app because I've realized that um, this little screen here, I think I've mentioned before, this little screen is really hard to get hold of now. It was the, I got them cheap because I guess they were stopping manufacturing, they had old stock. Uh, but they're not really available and it's crap. It's a totally crap screen. You can't see it in sunlight. It's terrible. Just when you need it most, you can't read it. So what I'm going to do is modify the software so that it works through the HDMI output. So if you've got an HDMI monitor, you get cheap HDMI monitors for Raspberry Pi, little four or five inch screens. They're probably going to be a whole heap better than this crappy El Budgeto LCD that I've got on here. So that's what I'll be doing with that. But, but mainly, the smartphone app will be really useful because if you don't want to use a screen, you won't have to use a screen. You can just plug it in and away it goes. You can check the status on your smartphone, be via Wi-Fi or by Bluetooth, and then you can set the parameters such as your, your home point, where you are. So the GPS in your phone will enable you to just press a button on the smartphone app. It will transfer the GPS coordinates to the ADS-B alarm, so it'll operate with you as the center point of the radar system and you can then set your altitudes your distances all the parameters you want to trigger an alarm whether you want the alarm to go off only when aircraft are approaching or to, or to remain on until they leave the area because it's actually i found over time it's much actually, actually much better if you sound the alarm as the aircraft is approaching but once it passes and starts moving away there's no need to have the alarm going anymore unless it turns around and comes back so once it's going away from you, the alarm can be stopped automatically. But you may not want that. So it's all configurable through the smartphone app. Unfortunately, at this stage, only Android, because I don't have an Apple iPhone, and I'm not that rich. So you'll have to use an Android device, a cheap tablet or whatever. And as long as it's got Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, you'll be able to talk to this. Maybe the best way, because everybody's got an Android tablet, haven't they? Except the rich people who have iPads. Um, so that's what's happening there. Hopefully I'll get that out in a few weeks in time for the Great Northern Spring, which is not far away, because this weekend is going to be the last day of flying we'll have here, at, or last day of summer flying, because then the weekend after it's model jets, and the weekend after it's already autumn or fall, as you say, in North America. And that's, so that's that. That's got that out of the way. So now you know where that's going. Now, uh, what else did I have? Oh, the uh, Outlaw 250 Part 2 build video. That's one of the things I came out to finish off today to redo a little thing and, and oh, just turned to custard. Just nothing worked. My audio wasn't working, I filmed a whole lot. My audio didn't, wasn't working because I forgot to turn on the microphone. It's just, I'm having one of those days, folks. And speaking of one of those days, Tango 2. I put a post on my community tab for the XJet channel, screaming at this transmitter. Now, the, the Tango 2 is a fine radio. I mean, it's great. And, and I've just built a new quad. But our first one I've built in years, actually, and it's the Speedy B Quad. So it's not state of the art, but it, it's actually real. I really like it. It's fantastic. I'm going to be doing a little more on this. Um, I don't even if they don't know if they still sell it, but if they do, it's it's a pretty nice frame, actually. Um, so I built that quad, and I thought I'll put Crossfire in it. So I got a Crossfire Nano receiver, stuck it in there, and set it all up. And then I found that the the sticks weren't calibrated very well. So ah. Easy, I'll just calibrate the sticks. I've done that on, on a raft of radios, done it on the, the jumper and the radio master and the and all the other radios I've got. You can calibrate the sticks, even the new jumper light. Um, you can calibrate the sticks really, really easily. So I leapt into calibrating this and my goodness, what a disaster. Um, and I thought it was just me. I thought, because I can't do very smooth movements of my fingers, I thought, well, maybe I'm messing this up because it says you've got to move smoothly and there's a little lady counts, a little lady inside. She goes, one, two, three, you've got to do it to the music. Um, and I just could not get it calibrated so that there wasn't coupling between the axes. So as I increase my throttle, because I'm mode one, my throttle's on this side, I'm old school. As I move my throttle, the, the uh, roll changes. So I was wondering why when I was trying to fly this thing, um, when I had just hovering, it would start rolling off to the right. But at half throttle, it was going smooth. Like, What's going on? I checked it all out. Yeah, it was calibration. So I have spent probably half a day, about half a day, and I've popped so many Parkinson's pills, <laughs> so much cinemet trying to get my hands steady enough to do this. And I got my wife to have a go. She was worse than me. So I finally got it near enough. But I'm running a huge dead band on my flight controller to get around the problem of the drifting, you know, the bad calibration. And I, so I put it on my community tab and said, look, this is terrible. I'm having a huge amount of time. 
and a lot of other people said, yeah, it's the same for us. It's really hard to calibrate the Tango. It's really, really hard to calibrate. So I contacted TBS support and they're really good. Actually, I've got to say credit where credit's due. They came back and said, you know, you've got to be smooth and all this stuff. And I said, I can't be smooth, mate. I'm on so much medication that, you know, um, you could smoke me and it'll make you happy. Um, but they didn't have any answer. And the guy said, well, if you're in America, I can, you know, you can, we can do it for you. And I thought, nah, not worth it. So I've just played and played and played and I've got it close enough now that I can fly my new quad satisfactorily. I, I, I'm still tempted to use something else because this calibrated just piece of piece of cake. Um, but I'll keep you informed on this. And if you've had trouble calibrating your Tango to go to the comments and tell me how much trouble you've had. I'd really like to know if this is a widespread problem or if it's just me, but my community tab tends to suggest otherwise. Maybe Team Black Sheep could change the calibration. I mean, you don't have to do all the pluses in the intermediate positions with something like this. So why do you need to do it with that? Well, I know why you need to do it with this, and I'll tell you about that in a later video if you like. It's all about keeping the price down. Um, right, uh, so as I say, yes, built in the quad. Um, what else have I got on my little table of things here? Oh yeah, yeah, had a really exciting experience today with these. These are new goggles from Skyzone. Now they're not the um, O30s or the O4Xs, but they are OLED, they're the new O20, 020, Skyzone 020 OLED goggles. So they're like the 02X, but with OLEDs. And I gotta say, um, <laughs> OLEDs are good. OLEDs are good. Now these are only 640 by 400, so they are not nowhere near the resolution of the O4Xs, but they are a lot cheaper. They're a lot cheaper. So. Um, I'm not quite sure the final retail prices. Are they value? I'll get into that when I do the review. But here's a little bit of footage from uh, that I shot this morning while I was reviewing these things. These receivers and these goggles are fantastic. They are the best receivers I have used in any goggles. I'm going to get an RSSI warning long before I get a lack of video here. But just to make sure, I'll just put my antenna up on the transmitter because <laughs> I forgot to do that. Um, right, so yeah, no, this is... Oh, I'm getting a, such a... Ooh, what's that mean? What's that? Oh, I don't know why this is beeping. I better come back. There's, there's no alarm showing. Why is it beeping? My charge. Oh, goggle battery. Oh, it's turned off. RF signal. <laughs> it's turned off. I'm going to have to go and find the quad. Yeah, wasn't that exciting? Wasn't that exciting? It was flying along and just turned off. Turned off. Oh, no. And I, initially I thought it was my battery had gone flat. My goggle battery was flat. But no, my goggle battery is fine. And if you want to see why they turned off, then you need to watch the review, which is coming up soon on RC Model Reviews. But um, yeah, I had to walk for the quad. Just as well, I had a spotter who told me where the quad went down because I didn't have a beeper on the quad I was flying, which would have made it very difficult to find otherwise in the long grass at the end of summer here in New Zealand. Now, one more thing to talk about today, and that is the new DJI Freestyle Quad or Cinematic Quad or whatever it is, because there's been so much discussion. All the channels are putting up videos, all you know, talking about it as if they know something about it. And I know some channels do. Um, and some don't, but a lot of speculation because it gets eyeballs on YouTube videos. And I'm, I'm not gonna speculate at all because maybe I'm not allowed to, I don't know. But I'm just gonna say, um, people have been complaining, it's the end of the hobby. It's gonna, these damn camera drone people will buy one of these freestyle things and they'll nail some person, some Karen will get one through her head and it'll be the end. We'll be, you know, be freestyle will be demonized as if it's not already. Um, and you know, we're gonna have the same problem with freestyle quads that we're currently having with camera drones where people are flying them in inappropriate places with a lack of skill, understanding, knowledge, and just causing issues. And so I thought, is that really gonna be the case? Is it going to be the case? And I thought, it's probably, there may be some of that. There may be a situation where someone goes out and instead of buying a Mavic or a Phantom, they think, ooh, this thing will do 90 miles an hour. I want one of those. I've seen the people on TV doing flips and rolls and diving toilet pans, and it's great, I want that. And they'll go out and buy one, rather than a Mavic or something that's presumably safer to fly. And they may get into trouble and may decide to dive a building and, and impale someone on the head. We've got to be aware of that. It's going to be, there will need to be some PR work on our part because there are going to be some bad incidents. It cannot be denied. Uh, if this, the specs are true and it does 90 miles an hour, if the rumors are true and it does 90 miles an hour and it weighs 800 grams, that is a lot of energy. That's enough to kill someone. So we have to be really, really careful. And of course, when we go and fly our freestyle quads, we generally have built them. We know how they work. We know the limitations. We know what we can and can't do. We know what's safe. We know what's not. That's why, although there's so many people flying freestyle, quads all around the world, often without spotters. We don't see headlines where freestyle drone injures woman or, or knocks person off bicycle or brings down an airplane because we're a little, 
look, we tend to be fairly responsible. We may be a little bit um, adventurous, but we remain responsible when we're flying these things. May not be the case with someone who's had no background in model flying at all and just comes straight into this thing with a, with a high powered, small windowless building made by DJI. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. But what I tend to think is going to happen with these DJI drones is that it's not going to bring a lot of people into the FP. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's going to be great. It'll bring more people into FPV. Well, I don't think it will, to be totally honest. Because I think what's going to happen is people are going to look and they go, hmm, shall I buy this Mavic, which is a fairly tame old lady drone that just floats around? Yeah, you can go fast, but it doesn't have, you can't do flips and rolls and all that sort of stuff. Or do I buy this fantastic freestyle drone like I've seen that guy, Mr. S Mr. Rust, Mr. Iron Filings, Mr. Steel flying on YouTube. I want to be a Mr. Steel. I'll buy this drone. And what they'll do is they'll buy the drone and they'll get a hell of a fright if they try and fly it in acro mode because as we know, it's not easy to fly in acro mode. What they'll do is they'll use it like a Mavic. They'll, they'll basically have uh, self-leveling, GPS stabilized, and they'll fly it around like that and go, look at me, I'm a freestyler now. And they'll Occasionally they'll flick into acro mode and oh, they go back to the self living GPS stabilized because they'll give themselves a fright. And I think that's what's going to happen. Most people who buy this freestyle drone will use it like a Mavic. Just thinking, ah, but I'm better than a Mavic flyer because I've got a freestyle drone. I can do flips and rolls whenever I want, except it scares me too much and I'm not going to do that. That's what's going to happen. So we'll have a lot of DJI will sell a lot of these things, but they won't be selling them to freestylers. They'll be selling them to the Mavic, the, the camera drone crowd who want to be able to do these cool flippy floppy things if they choose to, or if they can be brave enough to. But a lot of them won't. They'll just use it like a Mavic. They use it like a Phantom. They'll fly it around and it's got obstacle avoidance and it's got all the normal things returned to home. Those are the features they'll use. They will be very unlikely to use it in full acro mode, doing flips, diving buildings, all that sort of stuff. And I think the first time they try, it will scare them so much, they'll go straight back to GPS assist and it'll just be a Mavic in wolf's clothing. That's all we'll get. So it's going to be very interesting times ahead though, isn't it? Um, it's, I, I don't know. Um, I'll just sit back and watch. Hopefully though, it won't ruin the hobby for everyone by causing incidents that we will get the blame for because, oh, it was a freestyle drone. Oh, all these freestyle drones, they're dangerous now. Let's hope DJI's thought this through. Uh, but I can see why it's a money spinner for DJI. I can see why they're getting into this because it is the inkjet printer of drones. The inkjet printer of drones. Basically, when you buy an inkjet printer, you get the printer and you get a cartridge which has got a little bit of ink in it. And you get it for a song. It's really quite cheap. But then they charge you like a wounded bull every time you want more ink. And that's what's going to happen with these DJI freestyle drones. Well, they're not cheap. Well, they're reasonably priced, but they're not cheap. But they're going to make their money from spares, obviously, because it's not built to resist the kind of impacts and crashes and things that a full carbon uh, freestyle quad is. You fly that thing into a concrete pillar or a tree and it's going to need new parts. It's going to need repairs. So DJI will make a killing out of fixing these damn things. They will make a killing out of it because, you know, you can whack one of these into, into a concrete wall. And if you're really unlucky, you might break a motor, you might break an arm. But, you, you know, uh, a new arm, new motor, you can do it yourself, sold it up, away you go. You whack one of those DJI drones into a concrete wall and you are going to need a lot of plastic. A lot of new plastic and probably the proprietary motors and lots of stuff and, and that's how they're going to make their money out of that. And remember also, you can throw any old LiPo on here, even a lithium ion pack on there, but with the DJI drone you have to buy the special DJI smart battery and it's smart because it knows if you're not using a DJI smart battery and it won't fly probably. So, and those things are going to be so damn dear. They're going to be expensive. You won't be able to carry 10, you know, 10 of those in your backpack when you go out flying because if you do, you'll have to sell your house to do it. No one's going to do that. So that's just what I think in respect to that drone. It's going to be an interesting, useful addition to DJI's product line, but it will eat into the sales of Mavics and other camera drones because it's going to basically take sales from there rather than create new sales. I don't see it creating new sales very much at all because the other thing is that once someone's bought one of those DJI drones, they fly it, they break it, they think, hmm, actually I did like doing that, but hell, I'm not going to keep spending that sort of money with DJI, they'll go out, they might get into building these and, you know, then they'll be really into the freestyle arena. So DJI may be a stepping stone, but I don't think there'll be a lot of that. I think that that first acro flight is going to scare the pants off all those new freestyle DJI drone owners. When they flick that switch, they were going to flick it right back. <laughs> so 
Yeah, so that's it. That's, um, I just wanted to cover that, that ground this morning. I had to do a video because all my other videos have turned out custard. It's been terrible. But uh, there you go. Now, if you've got comments, questions, anything to say, go to the bottom of this thing where YouTube provides the lovely clear blank space that you can type in with your smartphone or with your keyboard on your desktop computer and have a go. I'm gonna, as I said before, I'm going to do some streams. going to do some streams. So I'm just hooking up my Panasonic 4K camera to my computer to do some streaming. Apparently you can do that through the Wi-Fi. That'll be interesting, won't it? So yeah, keep an eye out for that. I may do a test stream, which I probably won't advertise, but you may it may pop up in your feed, in which case just pop in and say good day. Otherwise, keep an eye out for uh, me advertising a stream when it happens. And that's about it for today. I, I've had guts full. I'm going home. I'm, I've got so much broken footage without audio and things that didn't work and mistakes I made. And I'm just going to go home now and probably go for a walk because it'll help clear my mind. And I've got so much Parkinson's medicine in me because I was trying to calibrate these gimbals <laughs> that, um, yeah, I need to do something uh, to get it out of my system. So there you go, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And remember, no mid-rolls in these videos. No mid-rolls at all. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You're making it all possible because at this time of the year, YouTube ads are worth absolutely nothing. Maybe even less than nothing. I think I'm having to pay for YouTube to put ads on my videos at the moment. The, the return is so very poor. But that's what you get for being a YouTuber. It's my choice. I can't complain. Yes, I can. I just did. Anyway, thanks for watching. Gotta go. Bye.